Hello to all traders and uh, welcome to this webinar provided to you for free by FX Primus. Uh, this webinar today is going to be uh, about technical indicators and how they're used to identify um, trading signals. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, wherever you're watching us from today, my name is Stavros Tusius and I'm the market specialist at FX Primus here in sunny Limassol. FX Primus is globally acclaimed for offering one of the fastest and most secure online trading environments available anywhere in the Forex industry. Our extra measures and safety have positioned us at the forefront runner in responsible trading, and we're now setting new standards in safety amongst our counterparts in the Forex industry. The company enables clients of all experience levels to trade over 120 instruments, including currency pairs, commodities, CFDs, and indices. You can do this cover in a one winning safe trading environment, founded on the proven philosophy of success through security. FX Primus um, sets the benchmark in safety for its industry-leading safety mechanisms. We were the first to offer client-funded insurance coverage with up to 2.5 million euros per claim and offer third-party monitoring for clients with throwers by boutique or client trust. In FX Primus, we are going the extra mile to offer you protection unseen anywhere else in the industry. Now, a little bit about me. Um, you can find out all the contact information. Uh, if you're willing to contact me, feel free. You can follow me on Twitter or LinkedIn and also have um, sent an email to me if you have any questions about the uh, webinar or anything else that I can actually help you with. I have been trading um, professionally. I have traded professional uh, for a couple of years and successfully, of course, and it's just decided to take this a step further and during the market. Um, so that I can uh, pass on my knowledge and my um, experience to um, different level or um, different experience levels of uh, traders. Now, before we go ahead, of course, I would like to read out the um, risk disclaimer. Please know that Forex trading and trading other leveraged products involves a significant level of risk as it is not suitable for all investors. Before undertaking any such transactions, you should ensure that you fully understand the risks involved and seek independent advice as necessary. Any opinions, news, research, analysis, prices, or other information contained on this webinar or linked to from this webinar are provided as general market commentary and do not constitute investment advice. FX Primus or its representatives do not accept liabilities for any loss of damage, including without limitation to any loss of profit, which may arise directly or indirectly from use or reliance on such information. Now, um, as we all know, this is a uh, webinar on technical indicators. We're going to see the ones that I find to be most important for a beginner trader and also I would say intermediate level traders as well and we'll find how they can produce signals. Okay. If you have any questions, please keep them for the end because we will have uh, for about 10 or 15 minutes uh, after the end of the webinar, we'll have some time to go through those. Okay. Now, Let's start with a little introduction. The technical indicators are quantitative or mathematical tools, and they are used for technical analysis of any types of markets, whether this is Forex, equity, uh, or ETFs. The technical indicators result from the mathematical processing of prices averaged in time, and also from a number of other market components, of course. They are applied on the charts to generate signals that can support chartists and traders' forecast price movements. And also, of course, um, this is through checking historical data. Now, it is a secondary measure to price action. Okay, so what we see moving on the charts as price, this is, uh, this is a leading indicator, okay, price. It's secondary. The indicators are secondary compared to actual price. But of course, there is also um, other leading indicators, okay? So here's what we are going to see today. This is what we are going through. We're going through uh, the types of indicators that there are, some volatility-based indicators, price-based, momentum, volume-based, and of course, time-based indicators, okay? Starting with the types of indicators, there are two main categories, leading and lagging, as I have mentioned in the previous slide. Now, indicators of both categories belong to either trend, momentum, volatility, or volume indicators. Now, the leading indicators precede price movement. Precede. This is probably a typo, sorry. Price movement. And hence have better predictive value. 
They are best used in periods of consolidation. For example, uh, the relative strength index and the stochastic indicator. Now, lagging indicators follow price movement, and yes, they have worse predictive value. But of course, they're still very useful during uh, trending periods. For example, like the Bollinger Bands, uh, excuse me, and the uh, MACD. Indicators can be also categorized under price-based momentum sentiment indicators and also flow of funds. Obviously, we're not going to look all of them. Now, let's start with the Bollinger Bands. Okay. The Bollinger Bands were created by John Bollinger in 1980s. Bon John Bollinger was a former FNN technical analyst, and he is a regular guest on CNBC. They are, um, the Bollinger Bands are based on a moving average of the closing price. The bands are two standard deviations above and below the moving average. Now, the markets will trade between the bands 89% of the time. Okay. Now, a signal is given when the currency price closes below the lower band or when the currency price closes above the upper band for a reversal signal. Now, when the bands contract, that is a signal that a big move is coming. But it is nearly impossible to say, of course, if the price will move up or down. In my experience, the buyer signals are far more reliable than the sell signals. Now, let's see an example. Okay. Now, the top band is called the upper Bollinger Band. And the bottom one is called the bottom Bollinger Band. And the middle is just a simple moving average of 25 periods. Okay. The distance, the difference between the two standard deviations, it's two standard deviations here, the bottom and the top uh, um, bands, they measure volatility. Okay, so um, let's continue on this. Uh, the Bollinger Bands represent market volatility, as I just said, the difference between the upper and the lower bands. They can tell us when price is in an extreme condition, when price is trending, and when price is consolidating, speeding up or slowing down. Now, price formations can be identified to indicate where the market is ranging, trending, or breaking. Now, when the market is ranging, there is no clear direction, the Bollinger Bands are flat, and the volatility is controlled. When the market is trending, there is a continuous upward or downward trend. The Bollinger Bands are sloping, either southern or northern. Volatility is neither controlled nor are controlled. When the market is breaking, there is a breakout. Okay, we're expecting a contraction of the Bollinger Bands and then an expansion. Okay, so the Bollinger Bands will narrow first and then expand. Now, this is an example of a range in markets. Okay, so we'll see the price moving between those two levels. They're not obviously too accurate, but the Bollinger Bands here you see as well, they are pretty much flat, okay? Apart of these, um, apart of these level, what you will see a small contraction and then an expansion down to this level again. We see that there is no clear direction, okay? There is no uptrend or downtrend. And that is the reason that the bands are flat and the volatility is controlled in this stage. Now, this is an example of a uh, trending market, okay? So what we will see here that the bands are sloping upwards. Okay, we will see also the moving average in the middle over here and over here and over here, three different points, is acting like a support. Okay, like a dynamic support. So we'll see an up move, a correction, then another move, a correction, another move, and correction until this breaks and the, the trend is changing. Now, in terms of a breaking market, okay, we'll see that the market is contracting in few um, different stages. Okay, we'll see here on the top, one, two, three different levels. Uh, in all, in the previous two cases, we saw the candle breaking outside, but this is not really a confirmation that the market is going to move higher. Okay, uh, we need to normally wait to see where the next candle is going to go. Okay. For example, here we have a very good breakout. We see we experience the uh, contraction and then the expansion. Okay, of course, this comes up to here. And if you see that price is again contained within the Bollinger Bands, okay, 
Here's another uh, example here. So we see a small period of consolidation and contraction. The floods, the, the Bollinger Bands are flat, and then we, we see a very big move up. Okay. This is um, uh, the breakout is when the markets are most volatile. Okay, and volatility is of course uncontrolled because the levels of volatility are too high. Now let's speak about moving average. It's a very simple indicator, and, and I just want to speak about it because all of them, all of them, all of these indicators have a different uh, use in on the charts. Okay, so board Japan's are specifically to tell us whether we are uh, in a trending, ranging, or breaking market. Okay, now the moving average is just simply an average of closing, uh, simple or current uh, price over a specific period of time. Okay, the uh, the simple moving average is applied on the price chart. It is not an oscillator, but a price-based indicator that follows the price, okay? It lags. Now, the exponential moving average is applied identically, but with reduced lag, as it uses recent prices, okay? And not closing prices. Now, they are used to smooth out price action, which is called noise in the market, and as a trend indicator, but with a caveat, okay? It is defenseless to spikes, okay? So they're not really good when there is a spikes in the, in the, in the markets, in price spikes. Now, let's see, for example, here, I have two different, um, I'm using two different types of uh, moving average here. One is simple moving average, and the other one is the exponential, okay? Now, you will realize that Actually, this is the way, the other way around. So just so you know, I have probably made a mistake here. Uh, so you see the, the exponential will most likely move faster than the simple, okay? Um, so it will, it will be, there will be a crossover here, although uh, they both use the 50 periods. Okay, so the exponential is, move, is moving faster. The uh, SMA can smooth price better. The uh, EMA can give you uh, more false signals, but sometimes also identify a market move faster than the a market change faster than the simple moving average. Now, when the two um, moving averages cross, okay, the likelihood of a trend change increases. Okay, over here we see the cross of the SMA 14 and the SMA 50. Okay, we see the price going higher. Okay, we see a small reduction of price, which is called a correction, and then we see the trend change. Okay. Now, moving averages are not only used for trend identification crossovers or double crossovers. Okay, they are also used to generate signals where price is piercing or breaks through them. Now, if the price breaks through, we will see the moving average to follow after a few periods because it is a lagging indicator. Now, if price is held back by the moving average, then the moving average acted as a support or a resistance, which is another application of the widely used price-based indicator. Now, let's see an example. Here, we have the 60 moving average on the red. Okay, we see the price, the, this green candle moving up to here, and then price is retracing back. Okay, so we have uh, the moving average here used as a resistance, and this is exactly the same over here. And this is a very good candle of a reversal. Okay, we saw the reversal up to a correction level, which is probably something around uh, 30, 30, correction 30, uh, and then we see the price moving higher. And what we will notice also here is that the uh, moving average, the um, the 60 one again is acting as a support at this stage okay and then price moving higher we'll have the first move up we'll have a retracement back to the 21 moving average okay and then the price of course is moving higher and then we'll see again the moving average acting as a support on the 60 moving average over this level now let's go to the third indicator what we're going to see today this is called um, the RSI, which everybody is familiar with, I suppose. Now, the RSI was developed by Wells Wilder as an oscillator to gauge overbought and oversold levels. The RSI is a rescaled measure of the ratio of average price changes on up days to average price changes on down days. The most important thing to understand about the RSI is that a level above 70 
indicates that a currency pair is overbought and a level below 30 indicates that it's oversold. Its range is from 0 to 100. Also realize that the currency pair can remain overbought or oversold for longer periods of time, okay? So RSI alone isn't a great timing tool. So let's see an example here on a um, quiet ranging market, I would say. We have an oversold area down here because price was pushed down below the 30% of the ratio, okay? And what we saw is that price again then moved up because this was an oversold level. We see this, of course, the same price moves up. And from here, from the top, we see an overbought level and price since then, uh, since it reached uh, nearly 87%, went lower. Now, mostly the relative strength is used for uh, reversals, okay? Combined with uh, support and resistance levels rather than continuation patterns and breakouts. Okay, the RSI is used on 14 periods, but most professional traders use the six and nine periods too. Of course, that depends on the time frame that one can use and on the markets or the pair. The RSI can be used to identify divergence and convergence level. Divergence and convergence levels, guys, are very important in the markets and they come as a result of um, uh, volume, uh, change in volume, okay, or closing trades or when uh, stop losses are heated. Now, uh, when divergence or convergence appear on more than one indicators, the signal produced is very strong. Now, let's see an example here. Okay, this is uh, this um, scenario, I would call it, is called a bullish divergence. Okay, so when do we have bullish divergence? We have bullish divergence when the price is making a lower low. Let me just get a pen or just get a spotlight. Um, okay, so we have this consolidation area, okay? Now, when the price is making lower lows, so from this low to a lower low, and the oscillator is making a higher low, so from this low to a higher low, this is called the bullish divergence. And normally we will see the market moving higher, as we saw over here, okay? One second, let me get the... Uh... Normal dropping mode. We are. We have seen this. Okay. Now, over here, here we have a scenario of a bearish divergence. Okay, which is the opposite. So when the price is making higher highs, so from this high over here, one second. From this high over here to this high over here, and the oscillator is making uh, lower highs. So this is a high and this is a lower high. This is when it's called the bearish divergence. And of course, we see the price moving lower. Now, there is two more scenarios, okay? One is the bearish convergence this time. Now, in this scenario, we see the price making lower highs while the oscillator is making higher highs. Okay, so we can clearly see that price is moving from a top, a, a, a high level to a lower, okay? And at the same time, the oscillator is moving from a lower high to a higher high. And then, of course, we see price moving lower. Now, in terms of the MACD, this is another indicator that is used uh, widely by traders. The MACD was developed by Gerard Appel as a way to keep track of a moving average crossover system. Appel defined MACD as the difference between a 12-day and 26-day exponential moving average, the MACD line. A 9-day exponential moving average of this difference, is the signal line, is used to generate signals. Now, when the signal line goes from zero to positive, a buy signal is generated in very general terms, of course. When the signal line goes from zero to negative, a sell signal is generated. The MACD has no oversold or overbought levels, okay? The current level is compared with a historical performance of the oscillator, which is called the histogram. The MACD is best used in choppy markets and is subject to whip shows. Here's um, exactly as I said on the chart. 
So these blue lines down here, this is the histogram. Okay, the MACD line is the blue line and the signal line is the red line. When we see a crossover, of course, this can generate a signal. When we see uh, uh, the histogram change the level from zero up or down, that can also generate a signal. Okay, combined with price action, it's a very good indicator. Combined with divergence and uh, convergence, of course, um, you know, this is also becoming a very good signal. Now, the MACD is useful for trend change and trending markets, okay? It's not really useful for ranging markets. It was uh, very good in breakouts as the, um, the uh, exponential moving averages raised tremendously or also on crosses above the zero line, okay? There is three different types of signals. Crossovers of the MACD line and the signal line, looking for times that the MACD is outside normal range, Okay, and use trend lines on MACD and MACD histogram to identify convergence and divergence. Now, I'm not going to go into the crossover. Okay, it's pretty uh, self-explanatory, but I want to show you exactly again the uh, the divergence scenarios. Here we have a bullish divergence. What happening? As we explained on the RSI too, the price is making lower lows while the oscillator is making higher lows. Okay, in this example, down on the um, on the oscillator, we will see both the histogram and the EMA is moving higher, while the price on the charts is moving lower. Another scenario is the bearish divergence. Here we said that the price is making higher highs, while the oscillator is making lower highs. Okay, in this example again, we will see both the MACD line and the EMAs, of course, not the market line, and the histogram moving lower, okay, while the price is moving higher. On this scenario, which is the bullish divergence, we will see the price making higher lows, okay, while the histogram is making lower lows. Note that in this scenario, um, we don't really see the moving averages creating any divergence or any convergence. It's just a histogram, okay? But also, if it's just a histogram, it is a valid signal, okay? Don't forget that. And here, pretty much the same on the bearish divergence. We will see the price making lower highs while the oscillator is making higher highs. On the MACD, we will not see uh, the histogram making much of a... Uh, higher highs okay so it, on this scenario we see only the moving averages actually creating a, uh, some sort of uh, convergence okay now the next indicator which is a very interesting one and is widely used by many to generate signals it's the Ichimoku the Ichimoku is a bit complex and much more complicated than any other uh, indicator that we have gone, gone through so far it was developed by Goichi Hosoda in 1930s as a way to improve the accuracy of future price action. Now, Hosoda defined Ichimoku as a moving average based trend system plotted with the lines constructed using 50% of the price between a candlestick low and high, opposed to open and close. Okay, so note this, I'm going to repeat again. Instead of a candlestick low. Uh, open and close, okay. The system is plotted with lines constructed uses 50% of the price between a candlesticks low and high. So right in the middle from the top to the bottom, okay, of the of the of the wicks, of the tails, not of the opening or closing price. So if the range uh, of a specific hour is 100 pips, that would be right exactly at the 50%, 50 pips. Now, the Japanese journalist, Hosoda, translated Ichimoku as one glance cloud chart. The key elements of Ichimoku are the baseline, the conversion line, two leading spans, and the lagging span. Okay. Now, the versatile indicator can identify support and resistance levels, trend direction, momentum, give us crossover signals, and also entry and exit levels when we uh, are on the positions already, okay? So let's have um, a, a um, chart now um, to go through the different definitions and different uh, 
uh, lines and components that I use on Ichimoku. Now, this uh, red the Seku, uh, Senku span is the, the leading span B, the red line. Okay, this is uh, the cloud, all of it together, the Ichimoku cloud. There is the Seku span B, which is the leading span, and also the Seku span A, which is the leading span A. Now we have two more different um, lines, okay, three actually in total, two trade very closely to one another, which is the Kijun Sen, it's called the baseline. Uh, the conversion line, which is called the Tenkan-sen, which is the blue one, the light blue one, okay? And the lagging span is the Chiku span. This is a gray line over here. As I said, it's a little bit complex, you know, and of course, it's not necessary that you look at all those lines, um, but, but um, you know, it's, it's a very good indicator to use. Um, but make sure that you don't make the charts hard for your eyes because um, you wouldn't want to disturb or get distracted from, from a lot of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, virtual noise on the charts, okay? Now on the next slide, let's just see a little bit more of a theory. Now, the Chiku span, as we said, uh, this is the, the gray line, is the lagging span. Okay, it's a price action, but 26 days back. The Tenkan Sun, which is the conversion line over here, the blue, the light blue one, is the midpoint moving average of nine periods. The baseline, which is the brown line that we see on the chart, is the midpoint moving average of 26 periods. Now, the Senku span A and B, which is uh, what produces the uh, Ichimoku cloud pretty much, they are a leading span A and B, is a price action of 26 days forward. Okay, pay attention to this forward. Okay, now the Senku span A is a midpoint between conversion and baseline, and Senku span B. It's a midpoint between high and low of 52 periods. Now, know that it's not important you remember all this or you know all this, okay? The important thing is that you need to know how to apply the indicator, how to read the indicator, and how to identify signals with uh, each uh, application. You don't need to know which line is which or what period is each one. Now, let's see an example here. Let me just get the uh, spotlight here. Over here, we'll see the Tenkan Sen crossing the Kin Jun Sen, okay? Now the cross over here is below the cloud, okay? Now, when there is a crossover of the two Sens and the crossover is below the cloud and the market is moving up, then this is a signal, uh, this is a weak signal, okay? It's not a very strong signal. Now, over here, we have the Tenkan Sen, again, crossing the Kijun Sen, okay? Now, the, the crossing is within the candle, within the cloud, it's not outside. So, see here, in this scenario, the signal is moderate, okay? It is moderate. Now, we also identify some uh, other different uh, uses of those uh, two lines. For example, here, we see the Kijun Sen acting as a support, okay? On this level and on this level. On this level, we see Senku span A acting as a support, okay? And on those two tops, we'll see the Chiku span acting as a resistance and the Tenkan Sen acting as a support as well. Okay, it's a very useful indicator, but as I said, quite complex. Now, the Ichimoku is best used in trading markets, okay? It's, loses, it's, it's losing its validity when it's in a range. It is not for reversal trading, but continuation and trend. Trading in the direction of the trend increases accuracy. For example, if we have a bullish crossover, when the price action is below the cloud, it should not be traded. For example, when, uh, as we identified earlier, this should not be traded. Okay, it's not a good signal. Now, a bearish crossover should be, and it produces a very strong signal, 
combined, of course, with the pivot break. Now, the conversion of baselines can act as entries, okay? The lagging span as an exit when you are in a trade. The leading span A and B can act as entries and also as stop loss levels, okay? For example, let's just assume that um, we have a crossover here, all right? And at the same time, we see one, two, three candles, bullish candles. This third candle that closes, we see a small correction down here, okay? The uh, Kinju Sen acts as a support right at this level if we assume that you opened a position, okay? You can take partial profits over here, okay? You can take partial profits over here or even close your position down here, okay? Because price is, is reached the uh, Chiku span. And over here, it's actually uh, broke above the Tenkan Sen. So you can use those for uh, take profit levels or stop loss levels. For example, if you open a trade over here, you could use the um, Kiju Sen or even the Tenkan Sen as a uh, stop loss level, okay? Okay, we read this through. Now, let's go into the stochastic. The stochastic was developed by George Lane in 1950s as a way to indicate the location of the current price in relation to its price range over a number of periods. Lane defined stochastic as, the, uh, as an oscillator that follows speed or momentum of price as momentum changes direction before the price does, okay? Momentum changes direction before the price does. I will repeat this. Now, the stochastic is rage bound, okay? When overbought or oversold, it can generate reversal signals by comparing the closing price to its price range. There are three versions of the indicator, slow, fast, and also full stochastic. Len used the fast stochastic to generate buy and sell signals based on divergence. Now, this is an example of a chart of how the fast, slow, and the full stochastics actually are uh, appearing on the chart. Now, if you will notice, the fast has a lot of noise, okay, because it gives more, um, generates more signals because it moves faster, of course. So it's not really reliable. Now, the slow and the full look pretty much the same, okay, pretty much the same. Uh, so um, I, would, I would actually go to use either the slow or the uh, full version of the stochastic rather than the fast. Now, the fast stochastic, okay, um, as I said, is the one that is uh, the choppy one, okay. It's a, um, the fast K, and we get the fast D, which is, um, we have the key and the D lines, okay. Don't forget these two signal lines, K and D. The, uh, the fast uh, is the three SMA of the fast, period of this, okay? For example, if we have 14 and three, okay? The fast uh, K is 14. The fast D would be three SMA of the fast 14. Okay, now the smooth, we have the slow K, for example, is the 14, okay? Which is the fast 14 smooth with three SMA periods. And then the slow D, which is three SMA of the slow K. The full stochastic, of course, you get full 14 periods. The fast 14 smoother with, uh, you know, a three SMA, for example, as we see over here, five and uh, 14 and three. And the full D would be uh, three minus the SMA of the fast 14, okay? And this is just general uh, formula of how it works, okay? So K is 100 plus the closing price, uh, closing price minus the low, divided by high minus the low. And the D is the three MA of the K, okay? Now on the stochastic, as we did on the MACD and on the RSI as well, again, we can identify signals by identifying whether there is a bullish or bearish divergence or convergence, okay? Over here, for example, 
we'll see the price moving from a from a high to a higher high and the stochastic moving from a high to a lower high so this is a bearish divergence and then the market is moving lower now on the bullish divergence to the contrary we'll see price going for to a lower um to a lower uh, to a lower low okay from a low to a lower low and the stochastic moving to a higher low okay this is called the bullish divergence now onto the convergence again here we'll see we'll see the price moving from a high to a low while the oscillator on the top of course is making a uh, higher high to the contrary, when we have a bullish convergence, we'll see the price moving from a uh, low to a uh, higher low, and the oscillator going from a low to a lower low. Now, the other type of the uh, indicator that we're going to see is called the uh, PSAR or parabolic stop and reverse. Now, the PSAR was developed by Wells Wilder in 1978 as a way to identify turning points and trends in market price over time. Wilder defined SAR as the parabolic time price system that uses price and time to stop and reverse as the trend extends over time. SAR is a trend following indicator, hence it trails price like a trailing stop. As long as the trend remains intact, SAR will keep raising continuously. When price stops rising and reverses below the SAR, SAR will shift position to the opposite side of the trend. The indicator can act as a stop loss level as it continuously protects profits from opposite directions. Let's see an example. Let me just get a spotlight. So if we're, we are here in a consolidating market, okay, and we see a shift on the uh, on the SAR, okay, over this candle from here to there, okay, so we are uh, going up, and then at right at this level, at this candle, the green one, we had a shift on the SAR. And after this, of course, it's after this candle is closing, the market moved lower, you see? And this level acted as uh, some sort of um, resistance, let's call it. Now, the trend continued, okay, until we had another SHAR shift, okay? So, well, so when the SHAR shifted from here, because we're going down to there, and then to there, markets moved up, okay? Now again, we had a continuation of the trend up here, consolidation area, and then again, another star shift. So from low, we went above the price, which means the market will move lower. And indeed it did. We had another trend continuation, and then the market carried further down. Now another indicator that I find to be quite useful because it has to do with the trading volume. Okay, and trading volume in trading is very important. The OBV, the unbalanced volume, was developed by Joe Granville in 1960s as a confirmation tool for trend continuation and trend reversal by considering both volume and price. Now, trend continuation, when volume and price are directionally similar, trend reversal, when volume and price are directionally opposite, Granville defined on balance volume as the cumulative volume difference based upon daily up and daily down closes. When price closes higher, daily volume is positive. When price closes lower, daily volume is negative. The positive or negative volume is added to the next day's volume, i.e. is cumulative. Now, here's an example. We see... Um, this level on the OBV breaking above, okay? And at the same time, we will see um, the market breaking above this level, which is 1.1290. This is the Euro dollar daily. Now, the OBV resistance over here breaks following the recent break of this level, okay? The OBV and also the price move into the same direction. 
okay, it goes up, it goes up. Now, over here, okay, we will see a trend reversal. The OBV resistance breaks following the recent break at 1.1826. The OBV and the price here move into the opposite direction. So there is conversion. And what happens is that the market is falling. Okay. This is, of course, the same scenario over here. Okay. We have a convergence, a uh, bullish convergence, I will, I will call it here. So price goes from a lower, from a lower uh, low to a low, to a higher low. And the uh, on balance volume is moving from a uh, from a lower high to a lower high, from a high to a lower high. Okay. Now continuing on the uh, OBV. OBV. Oh, one second. OBV is a running total of positive and negative volume total, which depends on volume quantity, and not only price direction. This is why it's a very important indicator. You know, volume quantity, it doesn't matter where price is going. If volume is considerably up one day and less another day, volume will still remain positive because it's accumulative. Granval believes that volume precedes price and any changes will first occur in volume and not in price. I believe the same. However, volume changes precede price changes too many times, so full signals can be provided. Okay? And that is why OBV should not be used on its own as any other indicator. You cannot go in the markets just by using one indicator. It's uh, suicidal. It is important to use trend lines and support and resistance levels within the indicator and compare with price to spot trading opportunities. Now, we're going to go into time indicators, okay, which are not really indicators, but uh, of course, if you use them correctly as a tool, uh, they, they are pretty much uh, measuring time. Now, cycles, okay. Cycles appear in a number of fields, not just uh, markets, of course, uh, a number of fields. The longest cycle ever was identified by Nikolai Kondratiev in the 1920s, where he determined a 50-year economic cycle in commodity prices. Okay. Now, an 80-year cycle was identified in real estate prices, which coincidentally is three times smaller than the Kondratiev cycles of 54. Okay, it's only three times smaller. It can be traced in capital markets too. Okay, interestingly enough, the equity markets. Uh, performed well in years, ending with five. And it performed very bad in years, ending with zero. This cycle is called decennial pattern and is constructed based on the last digit of a year. Now, other cycles form from U.S. president terms, re-elections, and other patterns. The phase, now the phase from accumulation to distribution and correction is what is called in cycles when we are looking at our charts. Okay, so accumulation, distribution, and correction. Cycles, of course, are not consistent. Okay, they contract and expand depending on momentum strength or momentum weakness. If momentum is strong, we will see extensions. If it is weak, we will see corrections. Hence, we have minor cycles as well. Now, the momentum, okay, when I'm talking about momentum here, cycles are not going to say the contracting, but depending on momentum, strength, I mean about velocity times mass, okay? Or speed of market orders times the volume, okay? Now, the cycles can be timed, of course, from cycle low to cycle high and cycle low or high. This is an example. As I said, this is the accumulation phase distribution phase, and correction phase. Now, we will know that the volume increases with price. Okay. Over here, we'll see again when the uh, volume is not increasing, 
let me get the spotlight when the when the price is moving up and the volume isn't uh, it's following up to here okay so when the price is moving low and the volume is increasing it means that there will be more downside pressure because everybody is selling that's why the volume is higher over here because the volume can be either positive or negative no one tells you okay the important thing is that whether it's rising or falling now as i said before this is the uh, this, uh, accumulation distribution uh, phase and this is one cycle for example okay this is the end of the cycle from there to there this is a cycle now if we leave this for a second and we go to Elliott waves because they are also very important and they also an indicator uh, of time let's say now the Elliott waves were developed by Ralph Nelson in 1938 as a way to analyze market cycles okay and forecast market trends by examining mass market psychology Elliott defined Elliott waves as patterns in price movements that posit mass market psychology between overbought and oversold levels the model says that price move between a motive and a corrective phase as we identified the cycle right on all times and scales of a trend an Elliott wave over a specific period of time looks at both price and time components hence makes it a very good tool to forecast a future price level at a certain certain future time okay note that most of you and i'm pretty sure when i say the both it looks both at price and time uh, i'm pretty sure that most of you when you look at your charts you only look at the price okay you will never look at the y of the at the x axis of your chart you will only look at the y which is the price the x is the time okay if you look at both time and price you will increase uh, you will um, uh, improve your trading style um, tremendously trust me on this so back to what we were saying uh, waves are not defined by price or time only okay they are also defined by their size their duration and that reflects uh, on the mass market psychology of course now what did Elliot say okay Elliot say that there is 13 recognizable patterns in the markets and that all patterns reform to identical patterns of larger size or smaller size you know you can look at it any way you want now fractally those patterns are similar okay it's just the size that is changing so the duration as we said there is an impulse wave and also the corrective wave okay the impulse or motive wave is this one from one to five okay and the corrective wave of course is this phase from a to c now note this is one cycle let's say but i could have five waves in that move okay up to the one and then i could have an abc down here abc this is exactly what i mean about structurally identical okay structurally they are identical but the duration is different Now let's see an example. Okay. Now this is a complete eight wave cycle. Okay. A bullish on the bullish market, of course. Uh, we have the first wave up. We have the first wave up, a wave down. Third wave is going up, wave down. Fifth wave is going up. And then we have the A, the B, and the C. Okay. which is pretty self-explanatory, but uh, you just have to get used to reading the charts and understanding the charts, okay? I uh, just went a little bit further to what I wanted. Next page is here. Now, what I wanna talk is another uh, great timing tool, okay? So uh, there is three that I, I love to use. Uh, most, but the both, uh, you know, unfortunately there's no indicators that you can use for cycles or, um, or um, you know Elliott waves um, the uh, Fibonacci retracement and extension all tools that can be used on your charts to identify um, timing 
the, how the time develops, high price develops over time. Okay, and there might be some sort of indicators, but uh, to be honest, it's, it's better if you just learn how to to use your eyes to read that stuff because it's important. Indicators are not as are not as as clear as the eye in in some cases. Now, I want to talk about Fibonacci numbers a little bit. The Fibonacci numbers appeared in 200 BC by Pingala, an ancient scholar. The Fibonacci sequence was first introduced to Western mathematics in 1202 by Leonardo of Pisa, or else known as Fibonacci. <clears throat> Fibonacci defined the sequence as a series of numbers <coughs> excuse me, where the next number is found by adding up the two numbers before it. We'll see at the, uh, this, you do not need to worry. Now, the recurrence relation was understood from the early 1600s, uh, but became generally discussed over the past few decades only. Okay. Now, when dividing two successive numbers in a series of numbers, the number represents the golden ratio, 1.618, else known as extreme and also mean ratio. Now, let's see how this works. Now, we said Fibonacci numbers represent a series of numbers in which each subsequent number is the sum of the previous two. 0 and 1, 1. 1 and 2, 3. 3 and 5, 8. 8 and 13, 21. 21 and 13, 34. 34 and 21, 55. And you get the point. Now, the Fibonacci ratios represent a series of ratios that come from the division of any number in the sequence by the following, or the next number, or the one after. So, if we just do this example quickly, if I, uh, I divide 13 with 13, it's 100. If I divide 13 with 21, I'm going to get 61.8. If I uh, do the 13 with 34, I get 32.8. If I do 13 with 55, I get 23.6, and etc. I mean, you get the point. Now, why are those uh, ratios important? Okay, because uh, those ratios are actually um, identified as very, very useful um, levels for either resistance or support or even exit levels. But before we see an example, I want to go into the different Fibonacci types. Okay, now we'll have the Fibonacci retracement, the extension, the projection, and then expansion to four different types. Obviously, I'm not using all of them. Now, the retracement, okay, from here to here, we have a move, okay. From A to B, this is called the retracement, okay. So the distance, this is the first up move, okay. So the distance from here to down there, this is called the retracement. Now, if this is 100%, from there to there, and this falls by 50%, of course, this will be the 50 retracement, okay? Now, the extension from swing A, X, A, okay? More than 100%, more than 100, so more than this level over here, okay, is extended from A to B. Now, this can be an extension of whatever. It doesn't need to be double or anything. It's just once this level is uh, breaking, this is called extension. Now, the projection. The projection is that what we have from the swing XA, a retracement up to that level, which is similar, identical to that one, it can be a 20% retracement or something. And then we we'll have another leg, okay, from B to C. This is the projection. This is called projection. Okay. So we have the uh, full move of the wave, the retracement, and the projection. Now, in terms of the expansion, in the expansion, we're going to go again from uh, X to A. Okay. A retracement will be made uh, from B, and it will form the AB. Now, a projection is plotted from A in the same direction and length of this, okay, to C. This is C. So now let's go on to the next slide. 
I think it's again on Fibonacci. Yes, so Fibonacci retracements are possible areas of support or resistance after a pullback, okay? They are drawn from low to high in an uptrend, high to low in a downtrend. Now, levels to remember are 0 0.14, 0 0.23, 38, 50, 61.8, 76, and 85. Fibonacci extensions are possible target areas to take profit, support, or resistance. They are drawn from low to high to retracement in an uptrend, high to low to retracement in downtrend. Levels to remember are 618, 1, 122, 161, 261. Now, when we combine the Fibonacci and the Elliott waves, okay, we have something great. Now, Elliott wave theory says that the markets unfold in sequences of five and three waves, okay? Now, the three important aspects, according to Elliott, are wave patterns, ratios, and time. The number of waves that exist in the market's pattern reflect the Fibonacci sequence. Yes, this is a very important point to remember. Okay, very important. The number of waves that exist in the market's patterns reflects the Fibonacci sequence. Now, rations are the Fibonacci series that are used by today's analysts to measure wavelengths, the size and the duration. Now, the first wave is the 100% of wave one. The second wave, where it retraces to either 50 or 61.8 Fibonacci of wave one. The third wave extends to 106 to 180 of wave one. The fourth wave retraces back to the 38.2 or 50 of the full wave one wave three length, and wave five extends to 26.1 of wave one. Let me tell you exactly what I mean. So, because reading it is a little bit confusing. This is my first wave, okay? And I have a retracement to the 61.8 Fibonacci retracement. After this, I get the second, the third wave, okay? The third wave, extends 161% of this distance, okay? So from that and that, 161 is this. That's the exact level, 161.8, okay? Now, from this level, which is the 100% of wave one, up to the 161, okay? We have another wave, okay, from here to here. And we have, of course, a retracement. Okay, now this retracement is the 38.2 Fibonacci retra retracement from wave one, wave three, which means from here to, to here, okay, this retracement is the 38.2. Now, after this, we have the last upward wave, which goes up to the 261.8 of wave one. Okay, so we have we have the 100, we have the 168, and the 261, okay, of wave one. And of course, then we see uh, the A, the B, and the C, which is the corrective wave, and this point exactly is the end of the cycle. Okay, so the combination of waves, the Fibonacci, retracement of Fibonacci extension and the use of cycles and theory uh, is very useful to identify whether the market is going to uh, end going up or end going down or where we can find support or resistance or even to use as a support uh, as an entry and exit levels when we are entering the markets. Okay, now of course if you combine the indicators that we are um, we used previously, um, you can identify uh, some divergence and, you know, for example, you could, um, let me just give an example, you could identify right here that price is moving up. You could, you could, um, you could see, for example, on the MACD, um, uh, you could have a MACD going something like that and then falling, right? So we'd see price moving up and then the MACD moving lower. So that would be a bearish divergence, for example, okay, and we would, we would get a signal down over to that level. We could know before because the MACD would have told us uh, that um, price is moving lower. But of course, over here, we know that this is a very crucial level because we're likely to see a reversal 
on the 161.8 because it's a very widely used level okay and uh with all this actually this is the end of this uh uh webinar from from my end now i am ready guys to take uh, any questions for um for not for 10 minutes actually i can do okay well a bit a bit a little bit late uh took a little bit longer than i thought but i'm ready to uh answer any of your questions please go ahead There's no need to raise hands, guys. Just go ahead and uh, type your questions. I see quite a few people here. I'm pretty sure someone is typing. Of course, what else we could do just so that you get a better glimpse of what I'm talking about is to go, uh, for example, into uh, a random chart. And I will show you exactly what I mean. Okay, this is the uh, dollar yen, the dollar yen chart. Uh, Amid Sijara, which combination of indicators to use together? Well, this is what I have on my chart. I have the RSI and the MACD, and I will add for you the Bollinger Bands too. I don't need to use it because I can read it without it. Um, so there we go. Uh, so I will give you I will give you an example. Okay, so um, let's see if this is something actually that can work. Okay, this can work. Let me just get my pen. And I want you to note those levels that I'm going to uh, draw. Okay. One and two. We'll see the price moving lower. Okay. On the RSI, 14. We'll see the price moving somewhat higher. The MACD, we see uh, the MACD line moves higher. And the the histogram, I wouldn't say, so it looks like it's a straight line, okay? But again, this is a good signal because I get two indicators that show me that there is bullish uh, convergence, okay? And what happens after this? The price is moving higher, and it moves how? One wave, two waves, three waves, A, B, C, okay? And this is the end of the first cycle, and then we enter a ranging market, Okay, now let me delete this and get back to it from a, from a closer perspective. Let's go closer. Okay, now I will draw again. We have first wave, second wave, third wave. Okay, uh, one second, sorry. Uh, third wave, yes, and A, B, C. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to take my Fibonacci. And oh, actually, I want to point some other 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 levels as well, because um, because it's very important to see that uh, right here, when the markets turned, I see a crossover, which is important and tells me that the market is probably going up. I see the MACD changing upward directions. I see the RSI moving above the 50 line, which means that the bulls are overtaking control. Okay. Now, what else do I see? I see that here, this level is actually holding firm. Okay. The price is not moving outside the Bollinger Band, which is a good indication. Okay. And here, the histogram, the lines uh, do not move below the zero line. Okay. And then what do I see? I see the market's moving again higher. Okay. Look at those levels, the 70, the 70, here again. You see, price moved lower. We have the crossover over here. But the MACD for all this period, the MACD is positive. Okay, you see, the, the lines are above. The volume, the, 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 the histogram goes below, but our signal lines are above. So this is some sort of it's um it's some sort of bullish market, but then you know we are very in a consolidating area here, very close to the 50 
we don't know what's going to happen next. But the important thing is that we identified one full cycle from here to here. Okay, now what I want to what I want to do. Let me just uh, clear this a little bit. This is the first wave. Okay, we said second and third and one ABC. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I want to take my Fibonacci and see how would that work. So take my Fibonacci from low to high, as we said. Okay, this is the low and this is the high. I will see the price moving up from there to there. I will see a retracement to the 50 Fibonacci. And from there, price will move to the 161. Correct? This is 161. And after that, I will see another retracement down to the 23.6, which also happens to be a resistance level over here. Okay, over here, resistance over here becomes a support. This is a retest. And then price moving for the third wave. Okay, and the third wave is probably the um, 161.8. So let me just, let me just, uh, one second, let me just get this uh, added to see where exactly it goes. Just as an example, uh, add another line that's a minus one. Point uh, six one eight. Let's look at this. Oh, it's not added for some reason. Okay, it is added. There we go. Okay. As I said, that should be the the further extension, the trend, the third extension. It's a little bit off. Uh, here you're probably around um, hundred percent of the first. Uh, let's just confirm. So I will add another one and that will be minus one. Obviously, don't forget. Okay, you see minus one, say this is minus one. So uh, here's what I think happened. This was probably like the minus 1.27. There we go, you see? Now, obviously this is overextended. I mean, it's not really um, useful to use to go all the way ahead from down here and close your trade here, okay? Uh, once you hit that level, you can take partial profits and then, you know, maybe even just take all of the profits here. But this is exactly what I was explaining earlier, okay? And even if we take the Fibonacci extension, uh, we'll go from down here to the first extension and then to the, okay, to the first retracement. Let's take the retracement out and it's pretty much, this is pretty much, uh, again, you see, it shows us uh, the levels over here. Okay, it's a very good tool, both of them. Okay, um, are there any other questions, guys? I hope you all um understanding what I'm, I'm, I'm going through. I see quite a few people in, but I don't see any questions. Please feel free to ask any questions. I'll give um, a couple more minutes. Hi, Ruby. How how I am? What exactly? which are leading and which are lagging indicators. Uh, we did that at the beginning. The uh, leading ones are the ones that uh, refer very closely to them. Um, we can't really see leading. Uh, there is there is controversy in this. Uh, leading indicators are normally called fundamentals, okay, economic indicators, because they precede price. The data will come out, the headlines will come out, and then the the, um, the, in, the, the price will move. Uh, but on the on the technical perspective, leading indicators are the RSI, for example, okay, and the moving average, the stochastic. The rest are uh, lagging indicators. 
when will I cover support and resistance zones? I there is um, there is another uh, Ruby. There is another um, um, webinar that I did last month uh, on technical analysis and support and resistance levels are covered a little bit over there. This uh, should be on our YouTube channel. You can go ahead and uh, have a look. Any other questions, guys, for another two minutes? You're welcome, Ruby. Can we find a recording of this webinar? It's been recorded, uh, Amit. It's been recorded, and it will be online on your YouTube channel, uh, hopefully by tomorrow. You're welcome. Adnan, Adnan, I see he was waving his hand earlier. Do you have any questions before we close this off? Ruby, you're welcome. There is a series of uh, webinars online on our YouTube channel. Uh, you just type the topic that you want plus FX primers and you will find something that I have done. Type my name as well if you want uh, if you want to uh, categorize them by who's made them, you know. <clears throat> now if you are uh, watching the recording of this or if you if there is a questions, uh, uh, you forgot to ask and you see the report the recording you know go ahead and send me an email i'm happy to uh, get back to you with uh, any answers on your questions okay uh, i do not see any more questions actually right now so i'm gonna go ahead and uh, close this off i would like uh, to thank you very much for uh, um, being here today and um, i want to remind you that um, the importance of the indicators um, is, I mean, the most important thing of using indicators is a combination of them. Okay, uh, do not use one indicator to trade, to generate signals. It's not wise. Use two, three indicators. If you get to a level that you're com comfortable with your strategy, of course, you know, as I am, uh, I don't mind using any, to be honest. I just have that because I'm normally normally have to draw for the daily markets auto you know so um, I can I can say myself whether there is some sort of change without looking at the uh, at any indicators but you need to get to that level first of course okay so um, have a nice evening or a good night or a good morning wherever you're watching us from and I hope to see you again in the next webinar bye